This is the 2021 Acura TLX Type S, and it's a bit of a surprise from Acura. I say that because this is a 355 horsepower sports sedan with rear biased all wheel drive and a zero to 60 time in the mid four second range, not the kind of stuff Acura is typically known for making. And today I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era. We've sold some amazing cars recently on Cars and Bids, including this Land Rover Discovery Camel Trophy participant vehicle, which sold for $90,000. This BMW 740i with an engine and manual transmission swap from an M5, which sold for over $28,000. And this Mercedes R63 AMG, which sold for over $38,000, the V8 minivan. If you're looking to sell your cool car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. You'll get the most views and the most bids and interest on your car. And if you're looking to buy a cool car from the modern era, check out Cars and Bids with daily auctions and great selection at carsandbids.com. So let's talk TLX. The TLX is Acura's mid-size luxury sedan, larger than the compact ILX, and it was fully redesigned for the 2021 model year. But the big news for car enthusiasts is this, the new Type S model with 355 horsepower turbo V6 all wheel drive. Like I said, this is a surprisingly serious performance sedan. Now this car is surprising because Acura just doesn't make stuff like this anymore. Anymore. These days, they're primarily known for their crossovers, the RDX and the MDX, which are great, but not exactly sporty. And Acura sedans are mostly forgotten, although this one will be remembered. Now, it follows up on some other high-performance Acura models from back in the day, the NSX, of course, but also other Type S models, the original TL Type S in the early 2000s, and then the next generation model that followed, those were great, and also the CL Type S, which some enthusiasts remember. But it's been years since Acura has made anything like this. And today I'm going to review it. First I'll take you on a thorough tour of the TLX Type S and show you all the quirks and features of Acura's latest sports sedan. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the TLX Type S, a pretty obvious place. That would be the key, so you can get in. The key on the front looks like a fairly normal key, except for three little lights at the top, which are kind of interesting. They're green, yellow, and red, like a traffic light, and they have different functions. The one on the left is yellow, and it lights up every time you push a button to let you know that your button command has been confirmed, and that whatever you wanted to happen has happened, locked or unlocked, or the trunk opened. Now, the the green button is the one in the middle, and it will light up if you start the engine from the key to let you know that yes, the command is received and the engine will soon be starting. Interestingly, on the right, you have a red button which will light up if you press a button on the key fob and like you're out of range and the car doesn't recognize your command, it lights up red. So basically every other car, you press a button on the key fob and you have to look at the car for it to beep or flash the lights. In this car, you can look at the key and it will let you know if your command has been received, and that's rather quirky. Now, speaking of the key, you flip the key over and it says in the back, Type S. You get a distinctive key just for getting the Type S performance version of this car. And in fact, you get a lot of distinctive Type S badging all throughout this car. You have a Type S badge on the front fender, for example, and you have a Type S badge on the front grille. And then there's another Type S badge on the trunk. And then you open the door and you have Type S on the door sill. And you have Type S on the floor mat. And you have Type S on the steering wheel, and you have Type S on the headrest. This is a special car for Acura, and they really wanted to make sure that you, your passengers, and everybody else knows that you have the Type S. 
so there are badges everywhere. And there are a few other ways you can tell apart the Type S from regular TLX models. One is this color. The Type S offers a few colors that are shared with the regular TLX, but this color is only on the Type S. It is called Tiger Eye Metallic. I guess they think this resembles the color of a tiger's eye. But either way, it is a special distinctive color for this car. Another distinction is the wheels. For one thing, you look behind the wheels, you can see these big Brembo brakes. That's obviously only on the performance Type S model. And the wheels themselves, these are 20 inch wheels, and this is actually an upgrade wheel for the Type S. The regular Type S comes standard with these wheels, or you can pay a little extra to get the wheels on this car that I'm reviewing. These wheels look a little better, and they're a little lighter, 24 pounds lighter than the standard wheel for the Type S. And next up, another upgrade for the Type S over the regular TLX models, very visible back here. For one thing, quad exhaust, which you only see on the top performance versions for most brands, and that includes this car. Acura tells me there are active exhaust valves inside the inner two of the four quad pipes, and those valves are always open if the car is in sport plus mode, the most aggressive driving mode, and that gives you the most aggressive sound. Take a listen to the exhaust note in sport plus. Also worth noting back here, not just the quad pipes, but also a rear diffuser. Mounted below the license plate, you have this aggressive rear diffuser, again intended to give away the fact that this is the pinnacle performance car in the TLX lineup. And next up, speaking of a more aggressive design for the performance model, the TLX Type S, you have the same thing up front with the front bumper and grille area. At the bottom, you can see the front splitter is bolder, more aggressive, more performancey, and it has a larger opening for a front mount intercooler since this car is turbocharged. You also have a distinctive grille for the Type S model. You can see it almost looks like sort of an explosion coming out from the Acura logo in the center. You have the logo, and then the grille explodes from there. Although, as you can also see, there's like a giant plate on the front of this grill, which is a little disappointing. It's kind of a cool grill otherwise, and this sort of screws it up. So I asked Acura, what's the deal with this? I know it's for the radar for cruise control and safety tech, but why does it have to be so big? And they told me that the actual radar sensor itself is really small. It would be a lot smaller than this giant plate in the front, but they have to stick it really far inside the car, and it's so far in there that it needs this plate to help amplify what it can see and what it can detect on the front. So I said, well, why not just bring that radar sensor closer to the front of the car? It'll be smaller, and then you won't have to put this giant plate here. That seemed fairly logical to me, but Acura said if they have the radar sensor directly in front, right at the grill, it will be able to see everything, but then you get in a minor accident, a fender bender, it goes from a $400 fix to thousands of dollars to replace your radar sensor since it's stuck right here. So this plate is actually on there to save you money in a collision. The radar sensor further back inside the car and the plate is obviously a lot easier to replace than the entire sensing system. With that said, one thing I do like about the plate is they've designed it to almost make it look like the plastic grill continues right up to the Acura logo, even though it's on the plate. You can see they've made this plate sort of emulate the look of the grill, which is kind of a funny way to do it. They didn't really succeed. It's pretty obvious that this plate is on here, but they tried. <laughs> and by the way, since I'm up here, one other kind of humorous thing with this radar sensor system has this giant very visible plate up front in back they've done an amazing job hiding the backup camera within the Acura logo you would never even know that it's there so they went out of the way to conceal that and make sure you couldn't find it but then they stuck this giant front plate on the front of the car which <laughs> kind of ruins the whole purpose of concealing stuff but you can't win them all I guess and since I'm up front next up let's go under the hood and you can see this car's engine this is a three liter v6 turbocharged single turbo twin scroll but single turbo charger and it has 355 horsepower which is a big number for any sedan this size but especially for Acura who like I said isn't really known for making cars quite like this. 0 to 60 in the mid four second range which is pretty aggressive and this car has all-wheel drive although it's rear biased all-wheel drive and it can send up to 70% of the power 
to the rear wheels. And Acura says you can definitely get some oversteer in this car when it's sending the most possible power to the rear wheels. Now, interestingly, Acura says it plans to reuse this engine in the MDX crossover to make an MDX Type S, sort of a performance midsize Acura crossover. Hard to believe. Obviously, the MDX is larger, so it's not going to feel as fast as this car, but it's still a performance crossover. Acura does seem to be embracing performance a little more than they have in the past. And next up, we move on to the trunk of the TLX Type S, where we have one of my very favorite quirks about the entire car. First up, to get into the trunk, you press this carefully disguised little trunk button over here in the brake light. You press that, and then the trunk pops open, and if you look inside, you can see my favorite quirk, and that would be the chassis bracing between the trunk and the passenger compartment. You can see these bars right here. Now, I especially like this because you can still put the back seats down to allow for a pass-through with cargo from the trunk into the rear seats, but obviously now there's chassis bracing in between the trunk and the rear seats, which kind of kills this whole pass-through thing and makes it way less practical, but you got to sacrifice some practicality if you want the performance of the Type S. You can even see it says Type S on the chassis bracing itself when you look at it from inside the car. Now, the thing I like about this most is that in 20 years, when tuner kids have regular TLXs that they're trying to pass off as Type S's by adding the wheels and the front splitter and the quad exhaust, you will be able to tell if it's a real Type S by glancing in here to see if it actually has that additional chassis bracing for better rigidity. Only the true Type S models will have that, and it will instantly reveal the regular TLX kids as posers because they don't have their chassis bracing in the trunk. And next up, we move inside the TLX Type S, which has quite a few interesting quirks and features. I'm going to start with the carbon fiber trim. You can see it on the door panel and in the center console area, some carbon. This is another exclusive feature for the Type S model, and it's optional for the Type S. It doesn't come standard with it. You have to choose the carbon package to get this sporty trim. Also in this vicinity, it's worth noting that this car has ambient lighting, upper and lower ambient lighting in the door panels and in the footwells, like most cars. But the interesting thing here is how you can configure the color of the ambient lighting. Now in most cars, you can just choose the color, green, yellow, purple, whatever you want. In this car, all of the ambient lighting interior colors are linked to different driving locations, and you can see them as you scroll through this menu. You have, for instance, Las Vegas and the Golden Gate Bridge. You have the Champs-Élysées in Paris, which is purple for some reason, and then each one you click on actually shows an image of that place in those colors to help justify their decision of why those colors match up to that location. Probably my very favorite one is near the bottom of this menu where you have Wall Street, which is green, green upper lighting and lower. And there's a picture of like green buildings there to help justify why they selected Wall Street for green. But really, we know that Wall Street is green because of money, a hidden little quirk of the Type S. Now, speaking of that infotainment screen, you just saw a little bit of it. And it's important to point out this is not a touch screen. Instead, the screen is placed too far away from the driver and front passenger to easily reach. So there is a control pad here in the center console. Now you see something like this and you get scared because you think Lexus, which has a terrible system and a similar control pad. It actually works a little bit better in Acura models, although it's still not my ideal. Let me show you what I mean. In order to control the screen, you can just tap anywhere on this pad. You don't have to like drag your finger around. The spots on the pad correspond to the spots on the screen. So for instance, if you want to tap the lower left corner of the screen, you just tap the lower left corner of the pad and click on that. And that's actually pretty easy, except it works well in the corners of this pad, but not quite so well in the center. It's a little difficult when you're trying to click on something in the middle of the screen to find that exact spot in the pad, and you're left with a little more trial and error than you'd want. And it's not quite as easy as just tapping a touch screen like everybody's already used to from their phones and their iPads and their dishwashers and touch screens on everything, except in this car. I like this system, but it could be a little more user friendly if it was a touch screen. Now, it's worth noting you do have a few extra buttons in the center console pad area to make things easier. You can see there's a home button here and also a back button, physical hard buttons that help you control the screen, which is easier than using the pad for everything. You also have a few controls over on the right side of this center console pad, specifically this little right side part of the pad controls a similar right side part of the screen, and you can use this part of the pad to like scroll or click on whatever's over in that portion of the screen. So the pad really does directly correspond to what's on the screen. Easier than Lexus, but again, not as easy as a touchscreen.
With that said, Acura wanted to make it as easy as possible for simple functions to be adjusted. And so all the climate controls in this car are hard buttons. You can see them all here. There is no climate control functionality at all in the screen. Everything you might want to do has hard physical buttons that are within easy reach, which most people will like since you're adjusting that all the time. Same deal with the most common radio controls, also hard buttons. You can see volume dial in the center, on off button, and the next track and previous track buttons all easily accessible so you don't have to go into the screen for those simple tasks. By the way, one quirk I love about the infotainment system is the scroll sound when you go between different screens. Take a listen to this wonderful little sound. And next up, also in this vicinity, some other interesting items in here. Probably the most unusual is the drive mode dial, this massive, shockingly prominent dial right in the center with the Acura logo. This changes your drive mode. I have been in Ferraris where the drive mode dial was not this prominent, but it is in this Acura sports sedan, kind of strange. Of course, you twist that to the left or right to go through the various different drive modes. And if you want to go into sport plus mode, you twist it all the way to the right to go into sport and then twist it one more time and hold it and then you're in Sport Plus. You can also easily go into your own individual drive mode which is configurable by pressing the Acura logo in the center, push that, and you're in your individual drive mode. Again, very prominent drive mode dial here. Now that dial is right above the gear selector here which is rather unusual in this car. You have three buttons and a switch. Park is a button, reverse is a switch that you pull back toward you to go into reverse, then neutral another button, and then drive at the bottom is a circular button that you can push. Certainly a strange gear selector situation in this car, but that's what it has. That's what most Acuras have, in fact. And next up, another item I like in this area is the control for the heated and cooled seats. You can see they're just normal buttons. You press them and turn on the heated and cooled seats, but you also have an auto button. You can press that and then the seats will heat or cool automatically depending on the exterior temperature. This is especially cool if you use the remote starter function, like on a cold morning, you turn on the car, start it a couple minutes before you get inside. Obviously, the climate control will blow out warm air to help warm the interior, but your heated seat will also automatically turn on to make sure your butt is nice and toasty the moment you sit down. Next up, moving on to the driver's side of this interior, let's talk steering wheel, which is a little sporty, very sporty for an Acura. You have these perforations over on the side where you grip the wheel, which is a nice sporty touch, and this is a flat bottom steering wheel, although just barely, just enough to count as flat bottom and that flat bottom wheel is distinctive to the Type S model. Now, another cool Type S feature is the gauges. You can see them here. They look sporty. They're red, red trimmed, red lit. They look performancey, and they are very cool gauges that definitely fit with like the ethos of this performance model. The problem with these gauges is they're fixed in place, and so the screen in the center is pretty small. Everything is kind of compacted into this tiny screen, and as a result, there are some very small fonts in this screen that make it kind of difficult to read and in some menus you can see a lot of information is jammed into this tiny screen to make sure they fit everything which just doesn't really work all that well it's a lot to look at when you're trying to focus on driving and on the road obviously i like these old school performancey analog gauges but this whole gauge cluster should probably become a screen it would give them more room to display all the information they want to so they don't have to jam it into this tiny screen now with that said one thing i like about this little screen when you turn off the car, it plays a nice little graphic of the TLX kind of turning off and going away, which is a neat little touch. And next up, another interesting control. To the left of the steering wheel, you have a button that looks like maybe a windshield with some heating. That button will actually heat the area below the windshield wipers on the windshield, like the area where the windshield wipers rest. You can press that button and heat that area up. That way, if you're in frozen, icy climate, your windshield wipers are stuck to the windshield, you press that and it will heat that area, the wipers will unstick and then you can use them again. That is a pretty cool touch. And next up, we get into the back seat of the TLX Type S. And the first thing you notice is it's actually pretty tight back here. The front passenger seat is where I would have it. And I'm sitting back here. I can barely get my knees behind this seat. Not incredibly comfortable. Acura made a big point to me about how this TLX is now about the length of a 5 Series, but way cheaper, like the same price as a 3 Series. Well, it certainly feels like a 3 Series back here. It is tight in these back seats. Kind of a surprise given this car's overall size. 
Now, aside from the relative lack of rear seat room, there's not really all that much interesting in the back seat of the TLX Type S. Although one surprising item is there are no charge ports for the back seats. USB, USB-C, household, nothing back here. Not at the back of the front console, not below the seats, not in this center armrest. No charge ports at all, which is unusual in a car like this, a midsize sedan. They almost all have them, but this one doesn't. Now, one thing this car does have on the door panel, you can see this beautiful speaker. Acura, very proud of the sound system in this Type S. They said 17 speakers inside this relatively small sedan. That's a lot. They even got speakers into this little area by the front grab handle for the front seat passengers. That's pretty impressive. 17 speaker sound system in the Type S. And so those are the quirks and features of the Acura TLX Type S. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the TLX LX Type S. There are actually a few interesting things to say about this car. First and foremost, it's fast. It feels quick. And not just at a lower speed, but it it hauls. Uh, 0 to 60 is in the mid fours. Feels a little quicker than that to me. And it has kind of a naturally aspirated engine feel, at least to me. In other words, you're not waiting for turbo lag. Like you barely even really notice the turbo. To me, this engine just goes and goes. And this car feels Exceptionally quick, I would say. Great responsive engine um, and easy to kind of toss it around and floor it and just boom, you're gone. Now, with that said, this is the performance model. So of course you expect it to be quick and you expect it to be the other stuff that goes along with quick as well. Like for instance, you expect great handling and great steering. And I have to say in that respect, this car falls short. So the sticker price on this car is around $54,000, they told me, which is like, you know, nicely equipped 330i territory and it'll smoke one on a straight line. But dynamically, this just isn't the car. And it has the same problem that a lot of Asian cars do when it comes to making a normal car into a performance car, which is, it's just too conservative. The steering feel just isn't there. It's just too light. It just doesn't quite have the instant precision response that you'd want that BMW has. The chassis is the same way. It just doesn't quite feel as well balanced and as kind of spry and performancey as a BMW Mercedes-Benz. And actually, it's interesting because I had that Kia Stinger for a year. I owned a Kia Stinger GT, and I don't even think this car handles or steers as well as that car. That had great dynamics. In fact, it was my very favorite thing about that car. This one just doesn't quite get there dynamically. So this is a great performance sedan. It's quick in a straight line, and it's decent steering and handling, but it's not quite what I would hope for considering you're in this thing they're touting rear biased all-wheel drive. This is the Type S, you know, the real first real performance accuracy in a long time. It just isn't quite in the performance realm of, of some of its rivals. And that's especially disappointing because I'm in Sport Plus mode right now, and to go into that mode, you really get hammered on ride quality. I mean, it tightens up, firms up the suspension as much as possible, and going over bumps is like wince, and you're like, oh no. So it's a tough ride, but you don't actually get the benefit of maybe the fantastic handling that I was kind of hoping for. Otherwise, I have to say this is a great car. There's a lot of things that I like about this car. Um, I generally like the interior. I uh, acceptable on the technology. Great technology for the price point. Don't love the non-touchscreen. Don't love the rear seat room. Wish it was a little bit roomier back there, but it has good trunk space and great space up front. A good roomy cabin for front occupants. And frankly, I really like how this car looks. In fact, I like how this car looks just about more than almost any other sedan in this price point category right now. I think the new 3 Series is really nice looking, except for the bulbous M3 grille. But I think this looks just as nice as any of the other rivals, uh, Mercedes, Audi A4, Lexus IS, that sort of thing. This is a nice looking car. So really, I think there's some there's some pros and cons here. And, and honestly, it reminds me of old Acura Type S models, the old TL Type S's, which is to say it's reasonably quick, especially compared to its rivals. It's a good value compared to its rivals, but it's just not quite dynamically there. Obviously, the interior not quite as nice as some cars, but given the price point, it's a good deal. And so that's the Acura TLX Type S. Aside from the new NSX, Acura hasn't made anything seriously sporty in quite a while. 
while. But maybe this new Type S signifies the rebirth of performance and excitement in Acura's lineup. And indeed, Acura has said they're going to make a high-performance MDX Type S, a Type S version of their mid-size crossover, which should be interesting. This is a neat car. It's fun, it's good-looking, it's reasonably quick, and reasonably affordable, too. And now it's time to give the TLX Type S a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the TLX looks surprisingly nice. Not beautiful, but good for a sedan like this, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration 0 to 60 is 4.5 seconds, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Handling is okay, it's fine, I think it could be better, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Fun factor is okay as well, again fine, but it could be a bit better, with more power, more engaging steering and handling, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Finally, cool factor, and although the Type S is the top range model, and thus the coolest version, it's still an Acura, it's not going to turn many heads, and it gets a 4 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 26 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The TLX Type S has a lot of good stuff, but it's missing some obvious things too, like rear seat charge points, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort is nice, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is good. Acura has a great reputation for reliability, but the interior quality is only good, not great, with some sort of cheap materials, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is normal for a sedan like this, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value, and it depends what you're looking for. This is cheap compared to BMWs, but it also doesn't have the brand name or the driving experience, it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 33 out of 50. Added up in the Doug score is 59 out of 100, which places it here against rivals. It beats out the BMW 330i, the TLX is simply better and more fun, and it also beats out some other mediocre rivals like the Volvo S60, the Cadillac CT5, and the Volkswagen Arteon. But the TLX Type S is still no match for the M340i or the Model 3 Performance if you can swing it, and frankly, I prefer the driving experience of the Kia Stinger GT. Still, this is a nice car and a good sports sedan effort from Acura. Acura says you definitely can get some oversteer in this car when it's in its full rearmost traction-y position. 